This video is a beginner's guide to using Apple's Compressor. Compressor is a really powerful video application that allows you to take many different video and audio files and to convert them into whatever you need for your other video applications. It's really powerful when you pair it with Final Cut Pro and it's also extremely powerful if you need to convert a massive amount of videos. There are many different ways to get a video file into Compressor. My favorite way is to select your video files right click and then select open with and compressor but it should also be noted that you could go into Final Cut Pro go up to file send to compressor and then select new batch and when you do this while you're exporting the video file you'll actually be able to continue editing inside of Final Cut Pro which is extremely powerful that means you can go from one project to another while it is all exporting in the background. The very first time you open up Compressor, it's going to look extremely clean and minimalist. So if you need more settings, and you definitely will, you'll go to the top left hand corner and click on this icon. This is going to bring in all of the different presets that are already in Apple Compressor. And most of the time, this is all you're going to need for most applications. However, if you need to further customize the settings that you need, you can go to the bottom left hand corner and click on this add icon. From there, we'll select new settings. Currently the format is set to Apple devices. Let's go ahead and quickly set up a basic export format for a QuickTime movie. So I'll just select QuickTime movie. We could rename this to whatever we want and then I will push OK. Nothing has been changed with this particular format. If we want to change the settings directly inside of this format so that all future videos that receive this preset have those exact settings applied, we can go ahead and select that preset, then go to the top right hand corner and click on this icon. Now there are a whole bunch of settings I could cover, but I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. The main settings that you should really focus on are stuff like the format setting. Right now it is set to video and audio. Sometimes you need to strip the audio from your video files, say you're creating a bunch of stock footage or something then you can change the format from video and audio over to just video scrolling down there are also some retiming options most of the time you're not gonna need to use these over in compressor so I recommend that you just leave it at a hundred percent underneath that you can select to embed your captions go ahead and just leave that option checked if you need to add in captions you can select your video file and then click on this icon then select set captions I'm gonna go ahead and click back on the preset so I continue to edit this preset as we move through going over to the video settings this is where you'll need to make your important decisions at the top there is this enable video pattern pass through. Essentially what that means is it is not going to compress the video file at all. What this is helpful for is it is going to retain the maximum quality when you send this off. You could also export it so that just your video file is compressed, but then you could go over to your audio and allow audio pass through so that your audio is completely uncompressed on export. Underneath that is the frame size options. I recommend you just leave this on automatic and it will sense how large your video file size is. This can be helpful though if you need to force a specific frame size. So for example, if I had a 4K video and I need to force it to be 1080p, then I could change that here by clicking on automatic and then locate the given setting. So we'll select up to 1920 by 1080 and that will now force it down to 1080p. Moving further down is your frame rate. Again, I recommend you leave this as automatic, especially for a preset, unless you need to convert something from say 60 frames per second down to 40 14 frames per second, then you could set that here. Underneath that is field order. Go ahead and just leave that as it is unless you're working with interlaced footage, color space, raw to log, and camera LUTs. Those are all powerful settings, definitely for more pro workflows. And underneath that, we can find this codec option. This is a really key and important one to setting up the exact settings you need for your video format. By default, it will set it to Apple ProRes 422HQ. This is an enormous file size creator. So I recommend that if you can, you set it to H.264 or HEVC. If you need the maximum quality, then go ahead and mess around with Apple ProRes. But if you're uploading it to the internet or sending it in an email, whatever the heck that is, then you would definitely want to work with H.264. So let's go ahead and select H.264. And scrolling further down, we have this average bitrate option. This is really important, especially if you're exporting to a TV station or something along those lines, they're oftentimes going to have specific 
specific specifications for what this average bitrate needs to be. So for example, they might say, hey, I want it at 10,000 kilobytes per second. You can go to custom and set that to 10,000. Now, something to note is that YouTube recommends between 35 and 45 megabits per second for your videos if you're working with a 4K video file. So you can set that here. Let's just set this to 45,000 and you should be good to go. Underneath that is keyframe interval. This again is something that you're gonna wanna mess with if you really know what you're doing. For this beginner's tutorial, I'm not gonna cover that. For higher quality, you could enable stuff like multi-pass, but this is going to take longer on export. And underneath that is allow frame reordering. This is a bunch of fancy stuff that your computer does that I don't completely understand. But what I do understand is while it can give you a higher quality export, it will make it much harder for older hardware to play this video. Underneath that is some cropping options, and this is actually where things start to get really interesting with the compressor. Right now it's set to none. If I brought in a video with a letterbox where it's just chopped off at the top and bottom, we could set this over to letterbox area of source, and it's going to sense the letterbox in the video and actually crop it down. However, if you wanted to add letterboxing onto your video, you could come down to the padding options. In here, we could set this to be, say, 16 by nine or four by three, whatever we really want, or you could type in specific values. So if I wanted to have a letterbox at the top and bottom of 150 pixels, we could type that in. Now notice how we're not seeing anything in our videos just yet. That is because I have not applied this preset onto our video files. I'll do that momentarily, but right now I just wanna make sure that this preset gets saved by having this preset selected for right now. You can also adjust stuff like the rotation and the flipping. This is really helpful if you happen to accidentally film hundreds of videos all rotated in the wrong way. You could really easily auto rotate all of them from compressor by building a preset. At the very bottom is where things can really get interesting. If we go to the bottom, there is this add video effect. I'll go ahead and click that. Then we can scroll to the very bottom and select watermark. What's really nice is if we had hundreds of videos and we were uploading them to a stock site or you were sending a client a wedding video and you wanted to get their approval beforehand but you don't want them to have the full quality video file, we'll go ahead and select that watermark and I'll just push open. And now when I apply this video, it's going to have that watermark in the lower left hand corner. However, let's go ahead and just set that to center for right now and we can scale it to the frame size, which means it will expand it to its maximum size here on our video. Finally, we could go over to the audio options. I am far from an audio engineer, so I'm not gonna get into every single one of these settings. I recommend for the most part, you just leave it to automatic and it will go ahead and work off whatever settings are already applied to your audio. If you understand audio though, then you can dive in here as much as you like. And finally at the bottom, it should be noted there are these audio effects presets you can add. So let's select add audio effect. We could add in a basic EQ if you needed to EQ your video really quickly. We could also add in stuff like a fade in, fade out, or a peak limiter. All really nice stuff to have. And one last thing you should see is that you can enable audio pass through if you don't want to compress the audio at all. You could do that right here. So if we take a look at the top here, we can see the estimated file size is 20.94 gigabytes per hour of source material. The video is an H.264. It is set to progressive. So you can see all of that given information here in the top right hand corner, which means that our preset is ready to go. So if we want to apply this preset onto different video files, all we need to do is just click and drag them over here into this window. And now you can see this specific file has received that preset. But with that said, compressor is extremely powerful with batch processing. So if I wanted to convert hundreds of videos at the same time, select one, push command A, and then apply this preset, and now it will apply it to both of those videos. And now here at the top, you can see we get a preview of all of the changes that it has made. It has applied that letterbox effect, and you can see that I have this nice little watermark here directly in the center of our video. Let's say though that I'm not quite happy with the settings and I need to make some minor adjustments to this specific video after I've applied the preset. Well, if I select this specific format here and then make any changes 
changes here on the right hand side, that is not going to save it to that preset that we built earlier, but it will change it for this specific file. So let's go into the video settings. Let's go ahead and remove the cropping on this specific video. And maybe our watermark is just too strong so we could go ahead and bring down the alpha channel on that watermark so it's quite a bit less. So now we have applied those settings just to this one specific video. If we go ahead and click on the one lower, you'll see that it still has the letterboxing and it still has a really intense watermark here in the center of our frame. Another thing you could note is if you need to make multiple versions of the same video file, say one is in 720p, one is in 4K, that we could go over here and I'll go ahead and select video sharing services and just drag HD 720p onto this specific video. And now both of those versions are going to be exported from that one single file. So this can be extremely powerful if you are exporting from multiple destinations who need a different file at the end. Finally, when you are ready to export, you can come down here and select Start Batch. Once you've done that, it will jump into the active window and it will show you this progress bar here, which you can also get a more granular view of by clicking on this expanded view. You can go in and pause a specific video or you can close one out if you so need. Now you'll see that I've got a bunch of failed ones and stuff because I was trying to create this tutorial, but we'll go ahead and just leave that be. Some other things that you should know that are really powerful with Compressor is we can set a default preset that is applied to every single video we bring into Compressor without us needing to click and drag it over. To do that, we can go up to Compressor and Settings. Then we can select a default setting and location for new jobs. So we'll go ahead and click in here. We'll go down to Custom and select our Like and Subscribe format. We can also find this location and change that over to something like the desktop. I'll go ahead and close out of that. If we needed to add some additional locations to that list, we can click up here on this top button for locations. Then we can click on this add button in the bottom left hand corner and choose a different folder. Say for example, our documents. Additionally, if I have a video already inside a compressor, I can right click on this location and go into my location settings and select other if I need a specified location for a specific file. After I have built this custom preset, we can go into Final Cut Pro, we can go to the top right hand corner, go to add destination and look up compressor settings. I'll just drag this over and now we can scroll down and locate our custom preset that we have built and select OK. And finally, a last feature I want to show you are droplets, which are so handy if you don't want to open up compressor every time you have a specific video file that you need to convert. Once we've set up our custom preset, we can right click and then select save as droplet. It should be noted that if we had multiples here, I'll select multiples and right click, then save that as a droplet all three of these formats will be included. So I'll select save as droplet and we can go ahead and throw that onto the desktop. And now you'll see I have this icon which is essentially its own little applet. What's cool is I can just click and drag these files directly onto that droplet or we can right click on one of these, select open with and you'll find that droplet here within this list which can save you a lot of time from needing to click and drag or directly open up that droplet. Now that I've done that, I can drop in my file. You'll see the settings that it's going to apply. We could set the destination that we want. Then we could push start batch. So this was a beginner's guide to using Apple Compressor. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may want to check out this video, which shows you a really powerful feature in Compressor that I love using for my videos in Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.